thing I want to start with, since tomorrow's the big day for the signing of phase one, is the US dollar one, uh, now in the midst of a throw over or throw under of this channel or this wedge. And I think it's something to be aware of that it could end up being uh, sell the rumor by the fact. It was the 18th. Thank you, buddy. So that takes us into the end of the week. All right. Uh, so looking at this back inside the channel, that's when I think risk uh, on will be in jeopardy right here. And even with the yen, you know, people are calling it a breakout. Steve showed a chart. And then during our meeting yesterday, Blake was talking about uh, he had resting orders in at 1020. Uh, I'm not trying to steal your thunder, Blake. I'm just saying, uh, you know, he had it, uh, this number for quite some time. And uh, can you clean it up a little bit, Blake? Uh, the high was 21 and a half. I thought the high was 20. So, yeah, you know, maybe you're a little out of sync. Missing top tick by a pip and a half. Uh, we're going to know that there's something wrong with this. Again, just like the wand was a throwover. This, a lot of people are calling a breakout. And you never know uh, if it is going to be a false breakout until it becomes one. And to me, that's under 109.70. So watch that. Uh, I lean that way because of TLT. And last week we had a bond auction. And, you know, for those of you who watch CNBC, uh, Rick Santelli gave it an A. That's because the bid to offer the coverage was outstanding with a lot of uh, international buyers hungry for yield came in and bought bonds. But is it just hunger for yields or could it be risk aversion by buying the bond market? So here's a TLT, it's compressing. It continues to compress. Uh, I guess it could compress for another month as this triangle, the lines will end up meeting. We can't go to infinity on this. Hello, Monica. And over 140 is going to be a close. Over 140 is going to be significant for challenging the high of the move. And here's your weekly. Um, a two week reversal would happen at 139.12. So we're a handle away on this triangle. And okay. You can't ignore the other side of it either. Uh, we'll have a breakdown under 136. So 140, 136 is going to uh, really give us direction, in my view, of uh, the next move in yields. Uh, I've noticed that 10 year, you know, everyone was happy that we were starting to steepen, but the 10 year is actually starting to look, there's your weekly. We're already under the two week, well, the two week off number is going to be near the breakdown at 175. And the 30 year actually is starting on shorter term. You can see it's actually starting to look a little heavier than the 10 year. Look at this pattern. And look at this pattern. Okay, so uh, what this is saying is the steepening that we were having, which uh, is a sign of a stronger economy is starting to give way a little bit here, okay? Blow up for the dollar? Uh, I'm not sure. I'm not sure. I I'm having a hard time deciding what the dollar is going to do. Anonymous. Oh, yes, I know. Dollar's going up. And uh, FX Coal has been pounding the drum on that for a while. Uh, Euro starting to look heavy. I mean, we went right to this channel line. I thought we were going to get a breakout here and it's turning back down. So having it be a turnaround Tuesday, we'll see if we could get a reversal. But uh, FX coal, I'm out of the way. Uh, almost felt like doing it here, but trying to maintain my discipline with stops under 1180. And then I'll give you your due. So if you believe that, why not just... Uh, 
U.S. dollar Swiss is almost back at new lows. Um, maybe you want to buy Swiss here, especially U.S. dollar yen. Okay. Uh, I happen to believe that there's potential for one more break in U.S. dollar yen, although we have a breakout. And um, if you want to notice what it's really tightly correlating with is look at this and look at S&Ps. Pretty identical. Okay, so I happen to believe that there's uh, one more dip in US dollar yen before the explosion. And I, I agree with some of the longer term counts, but I don't think that happens until this bond rally completes. But, you know, I'm wrong all the time. Only up. Nothing is only one direction or the other. And I wanna look at the gold here. So I thought there might be a shot for maybe a third drive and we've taken out last week's lows. So we'll see, I, I can't, I'm, I'm tempted to buy it here on turnaround Tuesday if we get a reversal because we're still, we only have two, this would be quite stretched to get a three up here, but you know, it's not that I'm always bullish. I wasn't bullish here, I wasn't bullish here but this picture of these two drives and the top on the second drive being almost 80. Okay. All right. How do I get in your hedge fund? I've been biting my tongue, but I wanna join your hedge fund. Cause you seem to be so certain all the time. When I was a young guy, I used to feel certain all the time. Now, um, I feel certain once in a while, and I'm open to both sides of the scenario. Uh, you have insider information from Goldman Sachs. Okay. All right. Well, Jamie Dimon is sitting right next to me. And he's fading Goldman. Okay. Jamie, what do you think of the dollar? Eh, I don't know. I wouldn't have it, but I'll tell you, Bitcoin's a joke. Oh, come on, Dale. He doesn't talk like that. No? <laughs> <laughs> All right. Let's hear your Jamie Dimon. In, in uh, I, don't, I don't do impersonations. Oh, okay. No. All right. Okay. All right. Well, anyway, Jamie Dimon. Okay. So go ahead. Take it. <laughs> the show's right, over. Morning. Yeah. Good morning. Good morning. Um, all right, guys. We're we're probably about. Uh, uh, this is this is Blake. <laughs> that was Dale. Um, hey, Blake. We're we're about a day away from. Uh, um, oh yeah. Uh, the the, the quote the unquote day. signing. I have a bottle of champagne here, Doug. <laughs> well, you know, it's going to be a big event. There's there's a lot of uh, dignitaries. This, you know, the you know. Um, uh, as you would expect, Donald Trump's turning it into more of a, uh, more of a, um, you know, I mean, it's, it's an event. He's, uh, remember, he's a reality star. So yeah, he jinxed Clemson last night. Did, I didn't, I mean, I watched the game until right, like anyway. the third, he was there, uh, like the end of third quarter. And then I, yeah, I, went good, to I fell asleep. Yeah. It was a good game. Yeah. It was a good game up until that point. Ellis yeah. used to sort of walk away from with it. And I'm yeah, like, yeah, it was, yeah wow. Win. Which they ended up winning, but anyway, yeah. yeah. Uh, how did he jinx the game? He showed up. Oh, okay. <laughs> All right. Well, let's uh, let's for, first and foremost let's talk about. You, you're right. The euro actually reversed right at a 38 percent retracement. Right at the uh, line. Yeah. Right at this little trend line. It, it's it's. You know, we're going to consolidate between now and tomorrow. There's, okay. there's no doubt. Uh, you were talking about the dollar yen. I actually had an order to short the dollar yen at one uh, one ten twenty four. Oh yeah, twenty four. Yeah, it was the one hundred twenty seven percent extension of this move, and it's the it's interesting. You know, this is the the multi year trend line. So uh, this I, my chart hasn't changed in I don't know, uh, Dale. How long have you been looking at 
this dollar yen chart of mine. It's been uh, exactly like a couple this. of years. Y yeah, it's been quite some years. time. And so we we're knocking our head right up against resistance. Now, here's the interesting thing. Um, you know, I I I, I have um, direct connections to most of the banks. So I've I got their analysts on chat and they're, you know, they're, they're, uh, everybody's, you know, chatting away about certain things. And, um, the universal call right now is long dollar yen. It's breaking out. So, you know, it's broken out above 110. We're buying dips to one, one, one Oh nine seventy. And if it breaks back below one Oh nine twenty, we're, you know, we're wrong. That that's the, the general consensus. If I had to just, you know, um, uh, you know, just kind of assess the whole situation from from all the banks that we follow. Because um, as you guys here, I'll just show you really quick. The this is just I'm going to give you just a quick glimpse. This is a chat box that you can see for my Bloomberg with you know all the different brokers. You can see J.P. Morgan, Citibank, Goldman, and I get all their traders, and I get all their thoughts all day long. And so I, I know I know what everybody's th doing and thinking for the most part. Um, and the general consensus, like I said, is the dollar yen's breaking out. It's broken a big Uchimoku cloud, which I don't follow. Um, but and and you know I can I can actually chat back with them. I don't typically allow allow everybody else to just kind of chat and I just kind of more um, you know just kind of sit around and listen to what they have to say and then i'll read the research when they send it out and hits my inbox that type of thing um the the this daily trend line is not being looked at by most people most people see this as being broken out i did get um interesting you were talking about the us dollar cnh no uh the uh there's a a jp morgan piece that was circulating overnight about you know this from from one of their chat one of their chinese um analyst was talking about how it could be a buy the rumor sell the news as far as the cnh goes there's been a lot of uh, uh hedge fund covering overnight and and i don't trade the us dollar cnh but it, it is it is something i will be watching tomorrow so you know if you're you know looking at the us dollar cnh this is kind of i haven't i haven't looked at this chart in, in quite some time i haven't really you know um Changed yeah, it's it trying all. a little throw over under the channel, trying to accelerate yeah, underneath. You know, it, it it looks like it's it's quite possible. You know, we could have some sort of you know, um, you know, basically you know, a sell off blow. But I try not to get too technical with the CNH because it is managed, so it's a managed currency. Oh, good point. It looks like a managed flag. Y yeah, yeah. I mean, it, it very well could be. Yeah. Um, but that doesn't mean that you know uh human emotions can't whoops be uh worked into this as well and and you notice that we were pausing really at the 618 retracement so uh i'd sure hate to get too bearish the us dollar cnh from here now if it for some reason starts to reverse higher then we know that that is probably going to indicate some risk off um that would be my assumption so um you know just some things to things to keep in mind as we as we as we move into tomorrow and i think that was a really good dale that was a really good observation that you've made regarding the us dollar cnh you know i'm 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 sitting here looking at the yen and no i'm not short the dollar yen um i i, do, I still have my order out there and it's going to stay out there uh because i'm hoping what i'm hoping today is we we hit a brief new high from overnight so overnight we hit 20 what 20 21 yeah. uh, like i said i have my order at 24 so and it's still there what i'm more interested in is seeing if we can we can hit brush into a new high and then i can get short and then uh you know i'll see about what i want to do with it after that i because what i'd like to do is i'd like to get short ahead of tomorrow and then tomorrow's reaction will be really important so um you know whether we get a continuation or we get some sort of reversal now also uh one thing that i will be looking for in the event that i do get short some dollar yen is how we react back here at 
you know, 109.75. This is going to be really critical yeah. for me, um, you know, as far as technically, you know, whether we maintain the breakout or not. So um, we'll, we'll, we'll see, we'll see what, uh, what happens down here. And wow, the dollar yen, or uh, the euro dollar is really coming off. Uh, the euro dollar, as we were struggling, let me see where's the, uh, let me do pull up the fib here real quick. Out of curiosity, let's see where we can get a little bit of, uh, a little bit of support here. So we're testing all these lows. Support's gonna be 111.08. See if we can, um, you know, th this right here, these this hourly candle, you know, we're testing the support. Kind of broke below just a little bit. See, we broke just just below a little bit. I'd like to see a man one ten oh nine offer, and I'm I actually might not, I might I might actually get long a little. <laughs> for a bounce i love i love false breakdowns so any anything if if i can get a false breakdown down here i'm in you know i th that's like my favorite false breakdown false breakout um you know those are those are you know, big uh trades for me those are trades that i love to do and and yeah because you have everyone wrong footed yeah i mean you know we went as low as one eleven eleven this low over here I have the 200 holding it on the four hour, the low so far. Uh, 111.12, yeah. So, the, the, I mean, I think we're, we're going to see a lot of support down here. And like I said, even a, even a move down to 111.10, you know, I, I would take that, the other side of that, at least for a bounce, you know, at least for a 10, 15 pip bounce. So we'll see if we can, we can if, if that was it, we might actually get a little bit lower, but we'll see i don't expect a lot today um you know the cable's coming in just a little bit i am long some pound as we're close to this uh this this triangle support uh, i like it down here i like being long down here um but i'll like it even more if we get back above 130 um, 20 you know because i think it's just being weighed down with the euro as the euros come off the uh, the, the pounds come off as well um and uh, the Aussie's not doing anything. You know, this is one of those situations where I have to say, and I and I know I've said it out loud, and I I'm, I'm going to have to say it again: the underperformance of the Aussie dollar is shocking to me. It's shocking that we are underperforming in light of this China U.S. trade deal that's coming up, and and. Uh, we're either going to see that as a canary in the coal mine after, you know, um, because as always, hindsight is 2020, or this is the best buy on the face of the planet right now. And I figured, I, you know, in my mind, I, I, I'm, I'm tending to believe it is more the former than the latter. And the reason why I say that is because it's too obvious. It's too obvious that I need to be buying Aussie dollars right now in light of this China U S trade deal, yet it's not going higher. And, you know, I was reading this in this uh, article out of Bloomberg last night and um, you know, it was talking about how the yen has lost its safe haven status. And I, and I sat there and I said, wow, that's interesting. How could you quite possibly write an article about the yen losing its safe haven status when equities are at all-time highs and the yen hasn't weakened. The, I, so to me, I think that, that this Bloomberg article, uh, here, I'll pull it up for you. Let me see if I can. Uh, I like hearing a, that. I'm sorry, it's an FT article. It's, it's Financial Times. It's uh, here. It's okay. Michael Japanese Bloomberg Japanese. ran an uh, ad to correct what you said. Uh, what's that? Michael Bloomberg just ran a national ad to correct what you said. <laughs> He's got says, plenty of dough. <laughs> the currency is strengthened after grim uh, geopolitical headlines, but not that much. Well, of course, it hasn't hasn't um, rallied by much because equities are at all time highs. You know, if equities are at all time highs, the dollar yen should be. You know, and I know we've had this argument a lot. The dollar yen should be trading at one fifteen or one twenty, but it's not. And so, 
I'm I'm in the camp that actually the yen is still very much the safe haven currency of choice. We just have it hasn't had a need to perform that Good way. Point. So when, not if, when there is some risk aversion, the yen will strengthen because we saw exactly that during the geopolitical risk off. You know, the dollar yen went from um, here, you know, the dollar yen went from 10970, you know, yeah. wherever we were at, 10930, all the way down to 108. And the S&P barely even sold off. So, you know, that, in my opinion, is asinine. If we get some risk off, you're probably going to see the yen strengthen quite a bit. Now, you, you know, and the, the big question is if, yeah, if it will come, you know, we will see some risk off at some point, whether it's Wednesday, Thursday, or whether it's, you know, in February or, or, or March, I don't know, but the market will, you know, sell off at some point and there will be assets that'll be bought in the FX. And my two cents is it's probably going to be yen and it's going to probably be euros as euro is the, you know, main, one of the main uh, carry trade funding currencies at the moment. So, and, and you're going to see a, a, a liquidation of the Mexican peso. And, and that's one other thing that I, I need to bring up too. The dollar max has held up very well. Um, the dollar max has held up extremely well. We've, uh, with, with risk on, the dollar max should be well below the two out 2019 lows. We should be well below these levels. We should have broken down big time already. We should be trading, you know, down here. That's not saying that we won't go down there, but we should be down there, um, you know, in, in this risk on environment. I think the risk that is building now is that you're going to get a reversal in the dollar Mexican peso, especially if we get some, you know, risk off activity. We'll probably say move back above 19 in the dollar max and probably, you know, back into this, uh, back into this um, uh, previous triangle. And then, then, then we're at risk of a complete false breakdown. So great this, insights this morning, Blake. What's that? Great insights this morning, Blake. Thank you. Well, I mean, these are just things that I'm, you know, obviously paying close attention to yeah, because with conviction, the, I, the I big, like the big, the big kahuna is going to be what happens tomorrow. What happens tomorrow is going to be very much the driver uh, tomorrow or the day after tomorrow is going to be, you know, the driver moving forward. Um, I think there is a very high risk of buy the rumor, sell the news. Um, I, you know, I, I, I keep getting into, uh, you know, um, discussions with the guys in my office about, you know, about is it buy the rumor, sell the news? Because, you know, some of their arguments are, well, you know, we've seen asset managers that have pulled back and they haven't, um, by the way, the dollar, the, the euro dollar is pushing the support right now. There's um heavy. Yeah, it is trading heavy because I'm thinking about buying it here, but I'll, I'll, I'll let this shake out a little bit. Um, you know, the, 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 the comments are, you know, is it, is it buy the rumor, sell the news? Has every, is everybody already long? Um, you know, is there, you know, more of a, is, is there more to come? Are asset managers going to put stuff back to work afterwards um, after a deal has been signed? Um, you know, what are the details? And, and I'm still in the camp after hearing all the arguments, I'm still in the camp that it's going to be a buy the rumor, sell the news. Um, but one of the other key components for me is also seeing the S and P and seeing how the S and P reacts up here. If you guys haven't been following this um, this webinar as of late, uh, you guys know I'm targeting 3,300 in the S and P. That's 161 percent extension of uh, the 2018 late year sell off, and it's also 161 percent extension of the uh, the Iranian blip, if you will. And so, um, so that's what, uh, that's what I'm, you know, paying attention to right as of, uh, this moment and, you know, where we, uh, where, where we go once we hit this 3,300 is going to be very, very telling to me. Um, but 30, 3,315, 
roughly. And I think on the cash market, it'll probably be about 3305. So you just, you know, watch your charts respectively. What I would do is if, depending on what, you know, if you're looking at futures or if you're looking at the, the cash index market is just take the, take the 161% uh, extension of the um, Iranian, you know, the, 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 the bombings that happen in, 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 in Iraq and, you know, from, you know, the whole Iran situation, take that sell off and, and project out 161% extension. It'll take you right to, you know, where I'm talking about. And I think that's going to be extremely, extremely critical, um, moving into, uh, moving into, um, uh, this next week. So with that being said, uh, I hear, uh, Stelios and Steve are here. We have some data today, don't we guys? CPI. Morning. Good morning. Good morning. So we have some CPI data coming out. Markets uh, hoping for some for some strong inflation, uh, uh, consumer prices, and we have CPI in the U.S. and it's uh, the market's looking for month over month 0.3 percent. So uh, we'll see if we can um, we can we can put in a, a decent healthy number. I know the market's hoping for some inflation, but. What do you think, Stelios, Steve? What uh, do you guys I'm, think? I'm, I'm crossing my fingers. I mean, I can't imagine life without prices going up for the consumer, you know, <laughs> e even if possible on a weekly basis. I mean, who doesn't want that? <laughs> Can you get a weekly basis of, <laughs> yeah. of higher inflation? God, that'd yes. be awesome. Yeah. <laughs> I, want, I, want, I want grocery stores to actually change prices on the fly higher as I'm shopping. Yes, yes. Awesome. So the moment cool. you get in the shop, you, you'll ask to put everything in a bag because until you do that, Prices will have changed, yeah, especially if you pay with Bitcoin. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> oh, guys, can you imagine that? You go in with Bitcoin and it's fluctuating, and you buy groceries. Oh my God! You, you, you guys, you guys know what I want. I want. Um, I have two daughters, okay, and I want them to study eventually, maybe in the US or UK. I want education costs in universities to rise with this even further. Reported, yes, to rise with this reported inflation. I will be happy with that. Oh, yeah, you know, everybody they're, would be. They're rising double digits every year. That's the thing. All right, guys. Well, the sarcasm, the, sar the sarcastic <laughs> remarks I can't take anymore. But hey, um, you want to hear my Jamie Diamond one more time before you go? <laughs> no. Um, but guys, remember if you want to join the Forex Analytics community, we have our special New Year pricing that happens only once a year. And it will be live for the next week, week and a half. Um, uh, uh, but don't miss out because if you've been on the sidelines waiting to be part of the Forex analytics community, this is the time everybody takes advantage of. There's, you know, two times a year at the beginning of the trading season and at the beginning of the new year, the beginning of the trading season, we always look at it as the end of summer. So this is the last time you're going to get this type of pricing for quite some time. So uh, take advantage of it. And remember if, you are also whoops I need to go to the dashboard here if um if you're like you know you want to try to be involved for free or help or help your trading reimburse you join the reimbursement program talk to forest park fx they might be able to get you in where you can um have your trading help compensate the uh the very small cost of being involved in our family. So, all right, guys, I'm going to pass it over to you. You guys have a great one. Good luck today. I'll see you tomorrow or I'll see you later on the daily roundup webinar. And you'll see, and members will see Blake in our members chat, which we're thinking about renaming. Yep. Yes. Okay. That's where I'm at all day. Yeah. Okay. Hey, thanks, that's, Blake. What, that's what we should call it. That's where we are all day. All day. Chat. chat. Yeah. <laughs> They're all day. <laughs> Okay, uh, so let me drag so here let's the have data a look. flash. It's only US data we have, so pick a, yeah, let's see. maybe dollar yen or euro. Yeah, we have dollar yen here at the bottom right. We have uh, euro USD in the middle, uh, uh, in the top this, row. This the week, cable, S&P. This week, yes, apart from tomorrow's announcement, uh, it's really um, CPI and retail sales from the US and UK. That's the big numbers. Okay, they're out or they should be out. Uh, yeah, a little bit weaker than expected. Marginally. It, year on year, it's the same. Month on month, point one. Yeah, only the month on month, yes. Yeah. So the yearly is exactly as expected. That's not going to do Still much. Still higher than supposedly targeted. Yes, place. yes. Um, 
Yeah, okay, I don't so think... So far, no real reaction from the market, and it makes sense. sense. I mean, the data were more or less in line. Uh, okay, Stelio, I don't think we should see any real yeah. big movement following that just because of that. So um, what else did we have? Uh, it's been very quiet, actually. We had nothing data-wise. Uh, the only kind of thing we can mention is uh, Boris Johnson was uh, speaking today about um, the Scots, they want to have another uh, independent, uh, yeah. and uh, their, their first minister, uh, Nicola Sturgeon, wants one badly. And uh, remember, we had one, what was it, two, two and a half years ago? So I think something like that, and it was like a 52-48 or... Yeah? It was, it yes, was, it was close. It was a, yeah, it was a, close. a little bit more, 54, uh, whatever. It was 50-something. But, um, yeah. you know, you, uh, you know, you can't have one every year or two or every three years, right? This is a, it's a pretty big thing. But anyway, um, Boris Johnson basically rejected this request. Um, I actually don't know him rejecting it. Uh, what effectively, if, if that dictates anything on the Scottish side. But anyway, he said the um, referendum would, would continue the political stagnation that Scotland has been seeing. So, you know, a bit of blah, blah and all that. But basically, he's against it and um, uh, he's been pretty clear about it. It's interesting because the, the, the Brits want to get out of the European Union, but, uh, you know, so they want their independence with one... Scotland wants its own independence. They're like, no, no, you're better. To yeah, go. then independence is, is not a good thing. Yeah, the usual, you know. Anyway, no, one, um, th one thing I have to say about Boris, you know, he's not easily intimidated and he's not bashful. Uh, he actually told uh, President Trump to dial down the intensity with Iran. He's not afraid to yeah. address things with President Trump uh, yeah. like a lot of other global leaders are. So he's I like that aspect of him. Yeah, he's definitely different. And from day one, he's been, I mean, I have to be honest, before he um, became prime minister, I was pretty scared of the, the possibility of him becoming prime minister. But he's been, you know, he's he's got things done and he's been a little bit vocal. But, um, you know, let me put it this way. In my opinion, he's been doing a better job than Theresa May, that's for sure. So, um, uh, you know, you, you just set the bar very, very low. <laughs> yeah. I mean, well, here, here, ring the Steve. Ring passing the bell. over, passing ring. over that bar was, was quite uh, easy to, to do. Yeah. Ring the bell. Yeah. Stuart Adams has uh, taken us up on our promotion. He said he's been waiting. Oh, great. For it. Perfect. Excellent. Welcome to our community, Stuart. Indeed. All Welcome. Right. Yeah. Um, so yeah, I mean, I, I'm struggling to find things to talk about it, but because there's um, actually nothing happening, I mean, it's all going to be about tomorrow and the signing of the deal. Which, by the way, they've said uh, there's been. Um, uh, I saw a headline saying that they may not disclose details of phase one. <laughs> so <laughs> that I, makes it even even funnier. <laughs> I, I don't think the markets would like that, but uh, you know what they're like. They might dip for a bit, but uh, everything is great, guys. We just yeah. signed phase one deal. Okay, what does it involve? Ah, we can tell you that, but don't worry about it. <laughs> it, it. It's classified. We can tell you, but then we we'll have to kill you. <laughs> yes, yeah, but don't worry about it. We signed it, so you know everything is perfect. Just buy everything. Yeah. So uh, that's really what we're waiting for tomorrow. We have a UK CPI tomorrow, which is also quite important. And uh, but uh, yeah, I'm struggling to find things to say, Steve. Sorry, I don't have. Much. Okay, okay, bro, no problem. Uh, I mean, we have quite a few charts to have a look at. So there were a few questions that I didn't even cover yesterday. So I'm I'm probably going to start from there, and you know whatever other question we uh, we get. So okay, thanks, mate. Thank you, mate. Thank you, coach. Anywhere specifically you want to start uh, from? Coach? Maybe he's out doing his Jamie Diamond. Uh, indeed, indeed. I, I know where he actually is. He's in the toilet. It's his usual toilet break. Okay, so um, first of all, let me start from the uh, USD yen. Um, I, I lost a few minutes at the beginning. I don't know if Blake mentioned it. I think he did at some point, but anyhow, um, watching the confluence of resistances up there. I mean, I know that Blake was looking to to be short. Uh, if you really want to be short, you know, unless you're a scalper, I mean, it's fine sorting it even here, right? Now, as, as I said, unless you're a scalper, because still, I mean, we're talking about like a, you know, a very limited uh, upside, if indeed this confluence works. Um, in which case, you know, if, if we get a, re a rejection from there, we, you can see a move all the way back towards 108. 
right? So use the yen at you know quite a key area, approaching quite a key area at the same time. You know indices also you can see here Webinar testing the not. testing the confluence of uh, resistance uh, resistances up here. The S and P is still at the same area we left it yesterday. Nasdaq uh, testing that ascending um, channels uh, trend line resistance. Um, the DAX uh, still uh, unable to really pull back, but you know we have this. Um, again, a confluence of resistance is actually because we have this ascending channel, trend line resistance. We have the, you can more or less call it a previous double top uh, up here from the beginning of 2018. And we, this is also the 127% extension of the last pullback. So, you know, more or less, you know, all indices are on resistance now. Uh, usually when I see something like that, uh, you know, you know, it comes to mind that probably the most likely uh, action you would expect is, um, you know, another push to the upside to take out uh, all the bears and then a reversal lower. So that would actually uh, coincide very nicely with the timing of tomorrow's um, deal. I mean, we might see like a pop tomorrow and, you know, then uh, by the rumor selling news as Blake has been <coughs> saying, uh, that will lead to um, uh, lower prices. So, you know, online. tomorrow is an important day. Stelio, you like to hear Amanda's voice again and again, I hear, right? Yes, sorry. I was, I was <laughs> sorry. <laughs> no problem. Sorry. Now, um, uh, before I check today's question, we had a question yesterday that I, I didn't have the time to cover. It was, what do I think about USD knock and USD sec? I'm going to also throw as a bonus Euro knock in the equation. So the USD knock rebounded from the previous resistance area. You can see how many times we found resistance in that uh, 880 um, uh, area before we finally managed to break out. In this case, this was uh, confluencing also with the 61.8% FIB. So we've seen a rebound from there. Now, I have to say that so far, I'm, I'm, I'm still short, by the way, a half a position. So uh, I have to say that um, so far, I'm viewing this rebound as corrective. I mean, it might as well be a bear flag. Um, so, uh, you know, I still like it to the downside. And 890, 892 uh, should continue acting as a resistance. So that's that's what I'm looking uh, for. I mean, if the pair wants to continue lower, I'm, I'm expecting that that might happen from uh, from where we are. Now, USD sec, the, the exact same situation, meaning, you know, it has rebounded. The rebound so far uh, could as well be corrective. I mean, it, it, it can be a pennant, as you see. And, you know, we're also confluencing here with um, this horizontal support resistance area, this broken head and shoulders neckline we're currently retesting it it's it's inclined as you see um a little bit higher we have the 50 and the 200 daily moving average so you know multiple resistances here so you know usd sec might as well uh continue lower from here i mean we've worked out the oversold conditions and this rsi divergence uh so um i think we can easily um uh, you know put like a short term high there and continue towards the 61.8 percent fee but 921 anyhow the risk reward is definitely in your favor if you may want to make an attempt to short here um you know you you have you you can risk like you know just you know a few pips to make a lot more so, and, you know, I said I, I'll throw the Euronoc as a bonus, and here's the Euronoc. I still have exposure here as well. I'm deep in the money, and the rebound is also corrective, in my opinion, here. We did find support in this long-term ascending wedge. You can see it here, but, you know, nothing says that we can't actually break down from there, and, you know, I don't really want to not have a position. So, this might as well also be a pennant here. Right. So I think that the knock and the sex still look like, you know, they're quite well bid. 
Um, now let me go through the question. But uh, Scott's referendum for a generation, 30 years, 55.3 to 44.7. Yeah, so it was, uh, OK somewhat close. As a Scots, we are more in England than in Scotland, and the intermarriage is close to 90% white trade independence from London to subservice to Brussels. No, I don't disagree with you. Uh, and neither is Stelios. I mean, I, he's not an advocate of one way or another. If we have independence, it should not be trading one master for a worse one. The Greeks should know uh, what I mean. Yeah, I'm, I'm with you. I'm with you. Um, I'm with you. I don't think you know one alternative is better than the other. Um, so yeah, and you know, people might decide what they want to decide. And I also don't see much of a benefit uh, leaving to go to the European Union. So you know, that is that. But Scots would be uh, eliminating at least one master. Yeah. Uh, gold and silver. Still, uh, Steve, please your comment on USD knock. Okay, we had a question about it today as well. Already covered. So gold and silver, yeah, let's have a look at commodities in general, uh, not only metals. So gold, another push lower earlier on the day, but you know nothing has really changed here. You, you can see that we're still following what looks like uh, a bull flag. So as I, as I was saying, I think we also had a look yesterday on the four hour chart, so let me switch to that. As I was saying yesterday or the day before or whatever it was, I was not against another push lower. Actually, I found it quite likely and even lower than where we currently are. I mean, we can, uh, this is what I drew some time ago that, you know, we might see a little rebound, which we did, and we might see another plans lower, which we did. But I was assuming that we might even uh, come lower than that towards 1520. And we might, we you know, we, we might actually end up doing that anyhow within the next a uh, few hours, few days, who who the hell knows. Um, now, I would assume that the general plan doesn't change here. We might have something like that. We might have something like that. You know, who knows? It's not easy to draw the trend line yet. Too early, right? Something like that before we can move higher. Now, how do you get confirmation that you know the corrective move is low is is over and and, and we're headed higher once again? In my opinion, uh, the safest bet here would be to look for a higher high. So we had this little re rebound top out at fifteen sixty three. So anything above fifteen sixty three is probably enough uh, of a confirmation that we're resuming higher. In which case. Um, I would be looking for a move towards uh, 1625, the 161.8% extension of that corrective move we had. Um, you know, when we have more uh, confidence that we found the low in this corrective move as well, then we can also FIB extend that move and see if perhaps we have a confluence, right? Um, so, you know, we might have a confluence uh, up here, who knows? Um, so, um, oh, for example, let's assume that was a low, which, you know, it's not very likely, but let's assume. In that case, you know, we would have the 127.2% being quite close if we move lower from there. Uh, you know, depends on where we move. Uh, you know, we might have some other uh, FIB extension higher. Who knows? Um, so um, I, I still think, though, that this move is corrective. Same thing with silver, right? I mean, silver is putting another uh, leg lower as well, uh, stalling once again at this 1770 um, area of support. Uh, even if we break through it, I would assume that. You know, we shouldn't be moving much lower than that before we can resume to the upside. So, you know, again, you can draw this corrective move, you know, somewhat like this or whatever. And, you know, then a resumption higher. I would also be paying attention to this trend line resistance in the RSI, would give an extra, you know, confirmation that 
we're resuming to the upside. In this case, I would be looking again for a higher high, which means something above 18.1 should be sufficient. Okay. Um, so bottom line, still correcting lower in both those metals, but in both cases, I'm still looking for um, a resumption uh, of the uh, uptrends uh, sooner rather than later. Customs at Berwick and uh, etc. ruining Sc uh, Scottish-based companies and irritating the millions of Scots south of the border. Yeah, I actually, you know, I've had this discussion. I have a, um, my wife, one of her best friends in school, she's married to um, a Scottish guy that lives here actually in Greece now. Uh, with her, so you know we've we've had this discussion. So you know I know exactly what you're talking about. Um, dollar going up for sure. Yeah, okay. Dollar going up for sure. Uh, I'm not going to go in this discussion again. We've talked about it again and again. <laughs> yeah, I mean, dollar has been producing overlapping moves in both directions. So if if there is one thing certain about the dollar, is that the dollar it's has uncertainty. No yeah, it's it, the dollar doesn't have a clear trend as we speak. I'm certain about the uncertainty. <laughs> yeah, I'm, I'm I'm quite certain that there is no clear trend yet, uh, and I, I think that when we do get a clear trend, uh, it, it's going to be lower. But that doesn't mean that we can't have been drifting higher as we were for some time until that happens. So I'm not excluding the possibility of seeing, you know, more upside in the dollar in the same choppy manner that we've had for you know quite a lot of time. Um, and over time, you know, this can lead to higher levels. I mean, can lead to 100 again. Who knows? 102. I, I don't find it very likely, but I definitely don't find it unlikely. But I do think that when we finally see uh, a decisive strong movement from the dollar again, which might be even months from, you know, today, um, it's going to be to the downside. So, you know, I want to be there for the big move. I don't want to be there for, for the slow move. I want to be there for the big move. So far, you know, I'm, I'm short the dollar against the knock and I'm doing quite well. So, so far, it's a market that you can still make money either being short or long, as long as you pick the timing correctly and you also pick the pair correctly. Because you know, not everything is performing as well or as bad against the dollar as you know the rest. So you know, you have to make the right choice and the right timing for the choice. Regardless, what what I said several days ago still remains to be the case. This is the fourth day that we're testing this, the bottom of this horizontal um, support resistance area. Uh, on average, it's at 97.70. So you know. We are bumping our heads on the resistance. So buying it, you know, right at resistance doesn't make much sense. You want to buy it, you know, wait for a daily close above this confluence of resistances. That at least will give you, you know, higher confidence that, you know, at least for the short to medium term, we're moving again to uh, the upside. Uh, Steve, now, uh, can you take yeah? a look at, uh, for me, I, uh, you know, I know I'm not part of the attendees, but whatever you want, you know, I tried to bottom pick pan, uh, Canada when I thought crude was topping before the spike. And we had that one more break on the weekly under the 30, 20 low. And here we are trading back at 30, 73. And, uh, now that I believe the trend has changed even though we could rally back to 61 62 is that starting to look like some type of bottom formed and that was kind of like a shakeout move under major support to you okay listen the only bullish case scenario i see here which isn't to something to dismiss mm -hmm. the bullish case scenario i see here is a medium term bullish scenario which is the following i'm going to draw it out for you as we speak so let's take this and it's this one Okay. It's this one. Okay. So, um, now the USD CAD suffers also from the same disease that the, that the dollar in general suffers from, which is the following. If you look at the price action and you zoom out, there are a few certainties here. One of them is that this move higher was impulsive. I mean, yeah. we can see how impulsive it was, especially when you see that leg higher was parabolic, really. 
I mean, it even right. overthrew a, such a steep ascending channel like that one we had. Then we had a very sharp corrective move lower. We had this rebound, which was clearly corrective, which means that even if this move lower was corrective, it should have at least one more leg lower. And I was expecting that. That happened. Yeah. And now we've had a move higher, actually a multi-year move higher following that, that has the problem that isn't corrective, isn't impulsive in nature. I mean, okay. I would have expected to see, uh, you know, uh, the uptrend reassert itself if, you know, that was not... Based trend. on the impulsive move in 2016. Yes, yes. Okay. but that hasn't happened. So no. we know that probably we're still within a much larger corrective move of the, that impulse. So the problem here is how exactly can you be sure when this is over and when not, since we're seeing in both directions of the market. By probing and protecting at um, important yes. areas and, exactly. and, and letting exactly. the market tell you. Exactly. If so you're right. Bottom line, bottom line, since we are in a market that still produces overlapping moves in both directions, uh, this is a market that somebody should trade using mostly, you know, targets, resistances, supports, and not overreaching, not, not, not being too aggressive with... Uh, well, not having with too targets. high of expectations. Exactly. Trade it, but you could hold a core for position. The, the tell to me is how it took out that uh, uh, support level with the big red candle, and now it's back above it when it took out the July lows. And now we're back above the July lows, which yes, has the problem interested. the problem though with uh, overlapping moving uh, moves like that is that they they create they create several technical formations which you don't know which of those to trust and which not. For example, yeah. we we are within this descending triangle, okay, which looks corrective, so we might as well continue higher from there. But oh. at the same time, we've had these channel which we are back testing this is the fourth day we're doing so we're currently trading above it but we were also trading above this broken channel support yesterday and yeah. friday and thursday but in every single occasion we ended up closing at resistance and not above it thanks so, for your luck buddy yeah, yeah. so i i do see the uh, appeal in being long against that low i do see and that how about might... the correlation with crude uh, what would that support if you think you know, that the, was a high last week the correlation was is not that high but definitely crude still affects usd card so it will act as a headwind or as a tailwind depends on what happens okay. so one thing is for sure if the, if crudes and let's let's go to crude since we since we're talking about that if crudes high here and this big reversal yeah. is actually yeah. you know uh, an important high right. in the market which we won't that, know until we look in the rear view but yeah yeah uh, speaking okay. of which crude is finding support by back testing this confluence of this horizontal support resistance area you right. can see that it has acted multiple times as supporters or resistance. And also the 200 daily moving average. So this is an important level for the market. And we need to see how the market is going to react from here. Okay. I mean, okay. Let's say we're going to 43 crude. Uh, is that going to be supportive USD CAD? Oh, yeah. Absolutely. Okay. I Absolutely. rest my case. Absolutely. So if I'm right about crude. So especially okay. especially given the big reversal that we had on crude. Yeah. And you know, if you if you are more of a bear here in crude, yeah, I mean the thesis for looking for higher prices in USD card becomes all that stronger, right? Okay, I'm I, I have to go. I'm gonna write a blog. About it right now. <laughs> okay. now, I'm going to let you, uh, hey guys, thank you very much for letting me interject, but you know, there are times, you know, that uh, I want to know just like you from the crew. Okay. So anyway, I hope you guys maybe will think about crude and the Canadian now with what's happening and Steve, go, go ahead and, uh, oh gosh, it's almost I'm going to shut up for six minutes or so. Go ahead. Uh, who do who do we have for an interview, by the way? Ben Maldonado, who's okay. been watching the 
1970s analog with Nixon and and you know there was an oil type thing going on there, et cetera. If he's lo- if he's also looking for uh, inflation to start picking up, I'm with him. Okay, he's very good. So because be with us. Uh, because the seventies was the decade, you know, of of, of well. Inflation. Let me say this: one of the first interviews that I had with Ben, he was looking at the weekly breakout on gold. Said, you know, we get through thirteen sixty, close your eyes and just buy it. Oh yeah, uh, no so question. That, you know, he was there before the breakout of gold. So, so from what I understand, work. I'm looking. Yeah, yeah. So from, from what that. I understand, we're looking the market in the same way, more or less, with Ben. Yeah, yeah. Okay, uh, now uh, there's a question here. If this is a head and shoulders formation in the pound Aussie, it might as well be. I, I've drawn it out on the four hour chart and yes, it might as well be. It's not the most be- beautiful one you've seen. Uh, I mean, you know, there is not such a nice symmetry in the head, uh, but the shoulders might end up being decently symmetrical. So yeah, I see exactly what you're talking about. And in any case, um, I was looking for a rejection up there uh, when we were testing this 190, 190, we got that. Uh, so, you know, definitely a break below this previous low is going to be a better signal, right? I had already marked here on the chart that, you know, below that area, we're moving lower. You want to look at it as a head and shoulders formation. You want to look at it any way you want. But yeah, I'm, I'm definitely uh, definitely on the camp that pound dozy below 1086.50 is bearish and it should produce continuation to the downside. So uh, yeah, I see where you're coming from, uh, Dillian. Uh, DXY pushing into a 30 pip compressing triangle from late last week, two hour and four hour chart, play the range in Euro USD. Uh, I'm with you in both camps. I mean, uh, yes, I don't think you should be trying to trade the Euro or uh, the DXY uh, for that matter, uh, you know, trading up and down here. I mean, I think that you shouldn't be trading the euro short as long as we are above 11080. Uh, and I think you shouldn't be trading the euro long as long as um, uh, you know you don't you're not willing to do it against support or then you should be looking for a breakout. Um, there is clearly there is no trend here for the time being. So my personal uh, recommendation is the usual one, which is find something that looks better as a chart and gives you a higher chance of actually catching up a decent move instead of you know trying to navigate uh, through this you know intraday turbulence that in essence leads nowhere for the time being. Mm-hmm. Yeah, professional journalists, folk, folks. Yeah, uh, I agree with you. You're referring to when Blake was mentioning that. Yes, and I, I agree with you. I mean, usually uh, journalists, uh, especially you know, on on turns, they are the best contrarian indicator. Um, let me see. Can can you ask your Scottish friend what he wears under his kilt? <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I will do so. Oh, come on, Steve. Let's have a Brexit vote here on the show. <laughs> yeah, let, let's do that. I bet, you know, they're going to listen to us. Um, okay, Dale, he who bottom picks ends up with stinky fingers. That's 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 indeed, a, you know, solid advice. Why trade unity in the UK, which observes the Russians and the common austerity and lower standards of living? uh severe austerity now you know richard you know I, i'm a little bit in disagreement with that because the problem is that the vast majority of the developed countries do not do need to go through austerity and the reason they need to go through austerity is because the previous generations were blowing through money that weren't there and you know if they don't rebalance their economies there's going to be a time of reckoning that's going to be much much worse than short-term austerity further down in the future and you know that time of reckoning is also going to bring a lot of social unrest much more than austerity is going to bring so in essence it's all about you know what do you prefer short-term pain long or or, or long-term you know uh, devastation so it's it's all about that uh, Scots in England not being allowed to vote in Scots national referendum at the last time is not democratic uh, you know uh, 
you know, democracy, unfortunately, is has been watered down so much in many aspects. You know, it's not that the democracy is not without its flaws. And as I've mentioned time and time again, the biggest flaw of democracy is the political cycle, which unfortunately uh, creates a lot of issues. Um, you know, um, I, I think there are a lot of flaws with the current political systems. Uh, not easy to fix, admittedly. Um, but, you know, definitely, uh, you know, the, the democracy we have in developed worlds is far away from the, what would be ideal. So, you know, the Athenians many, had the perfect democracy. They did. But keep in mind that, you know, every, was your time machine. It's very easy to praise the original democracy in in Athens and and in some other parts of Greece, but keep in mind that back then, uh, democracy was not what we call democracy today. So first of all, the people that have had the right to vote were yeah. not everybody, but selected. Yeah. Yes, yes, and one one of you know the logic behind that was. If you give, give voting rights to people that don't uh, have, um, are, you know, are not in the haves, they will democratically vote to confiscate wealth from people that have it, which is the exact same logic that the founding fathers build the American Constitution around. So, you know, the logic that you should have. Or as well uh, informed, maybe it should have been an educational. You should have a system but... with democratic elements, but <clears throat> in which property rights and you know everything else yeah. is actually protected from uh, confiscation. the majority. Yeah, from confiscation yeah. through majority vote. So you know it's a pure democracy. Like you know everybody has an equal vote for everything, is not something that works. We know that. So you need to. Even democracy has to be in moderation uh, in order for it to work. Yeah, and in California, in the divorce courts, there's no democracy. Oh, and, I, uh, you know the, what? You know yeah, what else? I want to give uh, ride the curve. I want to give you a high five with my stinky fingers today. Put out <laughs> your hand, man. <laughs> Way um, to be, bro. All right. Anyway, I, no one's going to stop me from bottom and top picking. That's who I am. Stinky. And you know what? I also have uh, those uh, gloves that hygienists wear and surgeons wear when I'm clicking my mouse. So don't worry about it. <laughs> <laughs> anyway, should I uh, talk to Ben now? Should I stay or should I go? <laughs> oh, God, I hate that time, song. Time for singing. Oh, my God. You know, whichever song we've suggested lately, you hate all of them. What's wrong yeah, with Yeah, well, that one's yeah. so weak. I mean, the guy is asking, you know, his girlfriend, should I stay or should I go? What I mean, doesn't his opinion count? You know, I but, am perhaps, now. But perhaps I, you're not looking at it the right way. Perhaps he's um, oh. blackmailing her. Like, oh. should I stay or should I go? <laughs> uh, yeah. Anyway, uh, I, I know you're too young to know about our gang and Spanky, but I, I, I joined the He-Man's Woman Haters Club that Spanky started with Alfalfa and everyone. Anyway, so uh, uh, let's talk to Ben Maldonado, who has logged in here, I think, 10 times. I hope I get the right Ben. You, you've been cloning yourself here. Is that cool, Steve? Absolutely. Go ahead. All right. All right. I'll, I'll stick so, around to. You see how he is. <laughs> Ben's name is here like, I don't know, 10 oh, times. Indeed. We'll see if it works. Four know. times, actually. Yeah. All right, Ben. I hope. How I... has he done that? Yeah. You, you, you're hacking our Zoom, man. Oh, three times now. Are you there, Ben? Did I pick the right one? I unmuted you. I have an idea. Why don't you promote all of them okay. and mute all of them and see which one actually speaks? <laughs> and we can then mute the rest. All right, let's try this one, Ben. I'll make him a co-host see how that works it doesn't uh, have to do with anything if he's oh, really? a panelist Can, uh, you hear us 
Ben, I see a sound thing going here. Unmute. Try that now. Won't let me unmute. I'm still not sure why you logged in all that. Okay, I think this is the last one. Hello, Dale. Hi, Other ben. case, I see which one it is. I'm gonna down. Uh, I'm gonna mute the rest. All right. I was working my magic this morning and coming in multiple times. Okay. Yeah. I I, <laughs> I didn't know that you you know you had four brothers and clones and everything. Uh, were you here uh, when I acknowledged? Uh, Remember the interview when you talked about a breakout in gold over Absolutely. 1360. So yeah. Yep. Yeah. You, you probably amazed that i you know all the interviews that i remember things like that you do i've seen you do it before with others you have a, a a good memory for specific things yeah i can't remember how i remember but uh ben i'm really looking forward to seeing your work here and uh i i'm still trying to figure out how what's happening with iran fits into your analog mm -hmm. uh, because uh, the hostage situation was under carter so um anyway uh take it away uh, i see your grid up here and go ahead yeah it's um uh, i'm really excited to be back here with you dale it's a it's a new year and a new decade yeah. and and we're gonna take a, a little wild journey here for the next 30 minutes but uh to start we're gonna go back in time and uh and see how our old friend the 1970s analog is doing okay um the we talked about this almost a year ago. The, the cycles that I follow are connected with the same thing people experienced in the decade of the 70s. Uh, the connections are numerous and they, and they continue to grow as, as we move through time now, more and more similarities and connections to what happened in the 70s is happening now. Uh, just to, to briefly go over well, right now, I just recognize one, uh, you know, and it's something that the general trading public will be aware of. Uh, we've been talking about a megaphone uh, recently over the last year or so, and I see that megaphone right there. Yep. There's there's your view of the of the, the 72 to 75 period. We had a, okay. a strong run up, a megaphone, a kind of blow off top, and then we rolled over. The, the connections that I want people to understand so that they can, you know, they can go back, they can check their history and they can see. Uh, we had a president who was uh, Richard Nixon, who was battling with the Fed. Trump is publicly battling with the Fed now. We had a president who was battling with the press. Nixon called the press the enemy of the people. Trump has hmm. basically said the same exact thing. Uh, in the investment world at that time, we had um, the nifty 50. There were the 50 growth stocks that every portfolio manager and everybody needed to have. Uh, today, the version of that is FANG and the tech stocks. Um, even, even more amazingly, the president at the time, Nixon, was connected with China. He was the first president to visit mainland China. He opened up relations with China. Yes. And we have President Trump now connected with China in a very different way, more of a confrontational way. But there's, again, history doesn't repeat exactly, but it certainly rhymes. Um, the most recent one to come up that was, uh, was amazing was, and it's only happened three times in the history of our country, we had a president impeached. Nixon was impeached while in office. Trump was impeached by the, the House of Representatives uh, last December. Uh, the, the other thing that's a little more under the radar, but, but I've, I've been checking and, and sort of making these other connections, is the 70s was a time of great social unrest. Um, and and it, was, it was characterized by marginalized people fighting for their rights. So people that felt left out or felt like they didn't have the same chances as everybody else were fighting for uh, that opportunity. And today we're seeing the exact same thing. The most recent connection, and you brought it up, is Iran versus the U.S. In 1978, 1979, 
um, the U.S. was uh, turning from a sort of sponsorship of the Shah to a confrontation with a theocracy. Um, Iran took over the U.S. embassy on uh, November 4th, 1979. So think about this. Not only is the connection there between the battle between the U.S. and Iran, but it's both centers around embassies, right? In, in 1979, they took over our embassy in, in Iran. But isn't that four years out of this analog? That's it's out the of the point. analog, but again, you got to look at it as a decade, right? It's a, it's okay. a, this is a massive cycle. So it's, it's the, the overriding theme that, that is occurring within this, within this time frame. Okay. I have an open mind. Yeah. And so I'll give you four years. Yeah. The, the connection that you, I want you to, to, to look at too is, they took over our embassy in Tehran in 1979. Yeah. This whole conflagration started because they attacked our embassy in Baghdad. Uh, yeah. It's uh, amazing. Yeah. The other thing I found, which was also very interesting, was environmentalism was huge in the 70s and conservative populism. They called it the silent majority. Yes. Which is basically Trump's constituency right now. All those things were present in that decade. So the connections are obviously there. Um, the, if, you, if you want to look and compare to what's going on now, let's go to the, to, the, to the present time. Here's the megaphone that you talked about. Yeah. Exact same structure. And now we're putting in this blow off top. Um, the odds currently favor that we are putting in this high somewhere in this time frame, And we're going to start to see much greater volatility and and downside moves in the stock market and it's it's a it's not a a massive prediction that i'm you know saying oh it's going to happen for sure 100 percent, but it's one that you look at the odds and the odds certainly favor it um not Wasn't only there a count ben in your last interview that showed a pullback first and then the blow off? Yes. Uh, or is it because it that really didn't manifest that we just went into melt up mode and it changed it. Absolutely. That's exactly right. Is that what happened? That's exactly what happened. We were looking okay. for um, another yeah, so pullback. So was my account. But here you have to, that's yeah. one of the key things about the market is you got to be flexible, right? If yep. the price yep. tells you something, you you adjust. Yep. And, and it told us that, listen, the melt up's underway. Um, I put out some tweets uh, early November, like November 2nd, November 3rd. It's still there, the pinned tweet talking about, okay, listen, this is what this is what it looks like is going to happen. So you got to adjust and you got to be ready for the melt up. Um, just last week, I put out some tweets talking about it's time now to be cautious. Um, I don't know exactly where this top is going to be, but we're we're in the neighborhood and the risk reward is is tilting away from longs and and more towards looking at the short side when price gives us a good setup. Okay, uh, an example of some of the ways that I look at this is here's your, here's your ES monthly, right? Um, the squares show geometry. The circles also show geometry. We knew that when we broke out of this, this, this arc <clears throat> of this circle and got above this, this red line here that we were set for a launch. And now we've, we've gotten the launch and the risk looks at least to come back to test this. If we can test this successfully, then we can longer term move off and make higher highs. If we break below it, you got to look at some sort of waterfall decline. So down big here. red line in the sand at uh, S&P 3000. That's right. In that area uh, on a monthly okay. basis. Okay. Here's, a look at, um, here's a look at the weekly. Shows that now we've, we've, we've sort of captured this ledge here like around this 3270, 3265 area. Yeah. As long as we can stay above that, we can still move higher. If we get caught below that, that can be, you know, the initiation. You can start looking at shorts. You can start looking at, you know, weakness down to this 3020, 3030 area. You know, and look and look how okay. this look how nicely this acted on the way out. We broke out, we came back and tested and then that was really the key right there. Yeah. That and that's the last green arrow. Yep. And that's what these, these, this geometry gives you is the ability to see these moves when they come back to this area and hold it. It's the launch pad. Okay. Now I see a couple of the uh, uh, vertical red lines, uh, like uh, one coincided with a 
high. Um, one came in after a low and we're approaching another vertical red line now. Is that time? That's absolutely time. Okay. And I, and so, I think, I think what you're saying is absolutely right between now and, and the end of the month, uh, is this time zone where, um, at any time we could put in the high in, in the next two weeks. Okay. And, and that's why I got people myself and, and anybody that listens to what I say or, you know, relies and, on it. And the horizontal ways. lines are supply and demand kind of yeah, like this is, this is resistance. support resistance. That's right. Okay. Nice to look. Yeah. Yeah. And there's your Meg. Yeah. Okay. Oh, now, there we go. Now, one of the things that, that I want to talk about is the, the theme for 2020 and Steve brought it up and I am absolutely a hundred percent on board with him is that one of the characteristics of the decade of the seventies was massive inflation. And I believe we're on the verge of unleashing inflation like we haven't seen in decades. And, and it's not just looking at the analog and saying, oh, because this happened then, it's going to happen now. I do the exact opposite. I look at the charts. I look at price and I say, what is price telling me? And then if price is sending me a message, I go back and then look at, look at the cycles of the past and say, where does it fit? And inflation fits. And what you're going to see in the next eight or 10 charts in different markets is a similar price structure all poised to break out signaling that we're coming back to an era of inflation. The other, the other thing, Dale, and you'll appreciate this. Um, who was the man who, who slayed inflation? He just passed away. Paul, Paul Volcker. And he just died. And it's, it's interesting yeah, that. I didn't even think of it in terms of that context. Yeah. Think of it. He dies yeah. and inflation comes back. Huh. That's that's a theme that I'm looking at. And it's yeah. it's interesting in the timing and it's the cycles and everything. So I don't think it's a, it's it's a cause effect. I think it's just an, another sort of mile market to look at. He was at very uh, worried about the state of the Fed and it's losing its independence before he passed away. Absolutely. And he's gone, and he's the guy who killed inflation. Inflation may make a comeback. I made a so, killing on when he killed inflation. Yeah. Those were kind of glory days in the late 70s. That was 880 gold was the peak when Volcker went to work. Go and you bought, those, you bought those 15 and 20% T-bonds, right? Yeah. Yeah. The, Unbelievable. Yeah, yeah, T-bills were uh, 19, 20%. Unbelievable. Yeah. So here's the first, uh, the first thing I want you to look at is soybeans this is a monthly every every one of these longer term charts i'm going to show you are all monthly so these are big long-term trends yeah. it's not a four minute chart it's not day trading this is this is what sort of the, the big wave that we're looking at soybeans has basically been in a seven year downtrend we are in the process of breaking that downtrend line and notice notice the this this where the support came in again on one of these support resistance Wow. And that last low was due to the trade war, mm -hmm. right? Mm -hmm. And now we're coming out of here on the resolution because that's one of the biggest things the Chinese are going to be doing is buying ag products. So um, the trade war was, looks like the final low at that support level. What was that? About nine bucks, eight fifty, something mm -hmm. like that. And, and we, it was a false break low to yeah. boot on yeah. support. That looks good, man. Yeah, beans looks yeah. good. Here's another one. Beans in the teens. Wheat. Yeah. Notice the pattern? Similar pattern. Yeah. Here we've got an 11-year downtrend. Yeah. That we're coming up out of. Like series it. On the monthly, a series of higher highs and higher lows. Wheat looks like it's set for a breakout. Yeah, and you, you, you can't eat gold. Nope. Corn is a little less uh, dramatic as the others. But yeah. it, it has a similar pattern with the, the saucer made a low, higher low, yeah. another higher low. Looks like the VIX. Mm -hmm. <laughs> Corn and VIX correlation. Yeah. Here's one that's already broken out. We talked about that before. Yeah. Um, and the breakout. I, I think gold goes much higher. It's it looks very bullish. Um, 
At our last talk, I gave an initial target of 1614 in November. Yeah. Uh, our high was 161330. Um, but I nice. think we go higher. 1686, 1759 are targets that are, um, I think, achievable. All right. Can I, can I just be Phil Donahue for a minute? Sure. You know, he was always Mr. Contrarian. So mm -hmm. when you look at the high at 1900, mm -hmm. and then you look at the low at 1050, mm -hmm. and here we are just a little bit above 61.8 of that bear market. Is it possible that uh, this could end up being a failing rally in gold and that we get something comparable to what we had like an $800 decline from the 2011 high from here would take us under a thousand dollar gold. What, and, and what could possibly cause something like that if you just put on your contrarian hat? I mean, it would be Nothing, some, right? some sort of massive deflation. Okay. The only thing I could think of, but is it possible? Absolutely. And I think one of the things I've learned being in this game and getting my teeth kicked in several times is you got to be open to all possibilities Yeah. and, and let price guide you to what is the most probable outcome. Well, this conflicting possible view would make the grains which have not come out of the hole yet, that doesn't have a lot of public participation in my preferred longs over gold. What do you think? I think the grains are probably a better um, longer term play, but gold has momentum, right? Okay. It's, yeah, it's more volatile point. with momentum. All right. So I, I think that I think there are different ways to attack the same uh, the same big trend. Okay. Here's another one, crude. same type of pattern you know this this same type of a bunch of lower highs flat bottom lows support here i'm not saying crude's going to 100 but it's possible pretty ugly week last week when you uh um acquiesce to that ben i mean you know uh compared to other markets even though gold came off silver came off they close higher on the week, even though S and P's came off. They still close sharply higher on the week, whereas crude really gave up the ghost. And uh, I'm curious what that grid horizontally, that level that intersects with your green trend line, is. It's um, with crude. We got to get to above 69.90 to 70 to be bullish. Okay, that's where the horizontal line is up it's there right in the here. trend line. Okay, yep, right in there. Okay, and I mean the upside target I have is ninety five fifty, and that the the only thing I can think that would be associated with that is some sort of Middle East war. Yeah, you'd have to choke off the Strait of Hormuz. Yep, and then we could end up, you know, up in here somewhere. Okay, um, that's crude. So this pullback and crude could be a great buying opportunity. It then. could. I okay. think it's it's worth watching, but I want that I want that downtrend line broken, right? I want yeah, to see. So it, yeah. So really, uh, you don't get the signal till sixty nine seventy bucks. That's right. So we get up. Let's say get up over here, yeah. pull back and sit on top of that, and that's your go. All right. So let me ask you this: a lot of people will feel late. Okay. Uh, you know, I could have bought crude. Uh, you know, under sixty and mid mid 60s and here it is 69 70 god i think i'll just wait for a pullback i can't reach how do you overcome that i've been susceptible to that for so many years when i first started trading is that you know if i don't buy the bottom or if i don't buy the first move i've missed yeah. it and the way to get over that is to 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 look at at the market in a way of where you can figure out where are these levels where I know if I hold this level, I'm going higher. I have, I have a high probability for a successful trade. And that's what it's all about. It's about thinking not in these certainties, but thinking in, if I do this trade every time for the next 100 trades, I'm going to win enough of them to where I'm going to be profitable. I don't know if this one's going to work, but I know over a series of them, they're going to work and I'm going to make money. But you got to have that. You got to have a confidence 
in, in doing your homework, doing the analysis, and then you, and then you see the breakout like here, let's say if we saw this breakout and pull back to this level, I know I want to be a buyer here. Do I know that that trade's going to work? No, but I know that over a series of trades, if I buy on support, I'm going to make money. Okay. It's all it, in our heads. It, it is totally and, in and, head. and a lot of it is because we're looking back instead of saying what's in front of my face right now. It's that Dale. And it's also this desire to be right. Right. I want to be right. I want to, I want to feel good. I want to have my ego assuaged because I'm right. Instead of I have a setup, the edge is there probabilities favor. It's going to work. So I'm taking the trade. And if I'm wrong, I know where I'm wrong and I'm going to get out and I'm willing to risk that amount and I'm willing to, to take the, the shot because I know if I do that a hundred times, I'm going to win enough that I'm going to make money. Okay. And that's the way we have to train ourselves to think. Yeah, it's a new paradigm. Yep. For most, it was for me. Here's Copper, old Dr. Copper. Yeah. S similar pattern, right? It, and this nice. is what, in looking at all these charts, this, these are all monthlies, right? This isn't, this isn't like, me curve fitting by picking a 60 here, a four minute there, or a daily here. This is all monthlies. There's another big downtrend with a, with a down sloping trend line, higher lows coming up out of the hole. And if, you know, for the Elliott wave guys, I'm not an Elliott wave guy. I just look at structure, but this is all these monthlies are showing a potential one, two, and are we moving up into a launch three? Worst case, are we just going to do an ABC up? That'd be a nice move too. Yeah. Uh, is, do you find any conflict in the fact that you're looking for inflation and higher energy prices, uh, higher copper prices, which are economically sensitive mm -hmm. commodities and a bear market in stocks while that's happening? Uh, could this be part of the blow off would be an inflex, uh, inflation rise in the markets with these things happening. It's certainly possible. The other thing is, what, what else happened in the 70s economically? Stagflation. Okay. Right? Where we have slow so that's economic... A bearish, that's a bearish argument for equities. Yeah. And then uh, with all these things happening, um, I'd be curious to see what you're looking at. Because I would think this would lead to higher yields all of uh, these charts that you've presented we're going to get to that let me show you okay. a couple softs here's sugar yeah. oh yeah look at the structure on sugar yeah same pattern coffee yeah, yeah. similar pattern yeah. yeah and here's here's what you just had questions on yeah here's your 10-year treasury yeah flip the flip all those other charts over and this is what it looks like yeah you had a high lower high lower high Lower low, lower low, rolling over. Okay. So the 10 years rolling over, which again would lead to higher interest rates. I think we get to the, um, I don't know if you call them pitchforks, your uh, purple dotted lines that you have there, are they just speed lines? Now these are, these are um, geometric extensions of this triangle here. Okay. Uh, you can see if we have a, this little triangle here and we extend, we extend the lines out yeah off of these different points and then you just repeat them over here I'm curious where the red line uh hor a uh, horizontal line and the upper purple dash line meet in confluence what level that would be up here we have it's about 13409 is our resistance okay um and these you know you could say any anywhere down here are the targets okay. right any of these yeah. lines that could we could pick up down here Okay. Um, and that's, that's sort of the big picture theme for inflation. The, the other thing I wanted to talk about, and we'll go, we don't have a lot of time, but I'll go through it quickly. And we've, we, you and I have touched on it a little bit today is, is talking about trader psychology mm -hmm. and how you think about the markets, because it, it's, in my opinion, for me, my experience has been, this was the, the turning point in my career as a trader. It was changing the way I thought, thought about what I was doing and how I approach the market. And it starts with, and this is from, from Mark Douglas's book, Trading in the Zone. There's five fundamental truths in the market in trading. And the, the overwhelming thing we have to understand is every moment in the market is unique, meaning 
no two two trades, no two moments, no two instances are the same because there's different traders interacting in the market at that at that moment. So if every moment in the market is unique, how can you survive? How can you how can you know what's going to happen next? Well, one of the important things to think about is you don't need to know what's going to happen next to make money because we can't know what's going to happen next. Right. We can only know that there's a probability of something going to happen next. And if the probabilities are in your favor, you have an edge. Now, here, this gets to the other thing we just talked about. There's a random distribution between wins and losses. I don't know on any trade I make on a specific trade whether it's going to be a winner or a loser. I only know that if I enter with the discipline and if I enter with a system that I've put together, that I have an edge. And if I have an edge, I don't know if I'm going to win on that one specific trade, but I know over a series of trades, I'm going to win enough to make money. The, the thing you talked about and the thing we all need to know as traders, anything can happen. Yep. And if you, if you don't believe anything can happen in the market and you don't apply that to how you trade or how you, how you manage risk, eventually you're going to get smoked. I saw a funny quote the other day that I, th I thought I'd share with you. He said, there's two kinds of traders. Uh, there are traders who have blown up an account and there are traders who are going to blow up an account. Yeah. And, and you have to think that way, that anything can happen in the market. Therefore, you have to manage your risk. The only way you can survive in the markets, given that there's these five fundamental truths about it, is you must have an edge. And an edge is nothing more than, a, than an increased probability of something happening over something else happening. Now, a lot of people talk about edges, but how do you define an edge? Where, where, what is an edge and how do you get an edge? We've sort of categorized edges into a trinity. There's an edge in risk management. There's an edge in trade management. And there's an edge in psychological discipline. Risk management, I'll, I'll, I'll focus on that. I'll give you an example of it. So let's talk about trade management. Trade management is how you enter, how you exit, how you take profits, how you move your stop, how you manage risk. You got to have a system to do that that gives you an edge. Psychological discipline is, is, is having the ability to trade with defined rules and, and, and to not have these uh, dealing with uncertainty, dealing with risk, dealing with probability, dealing with fear, dealing with greed, dealing with trauma. You can't have those things negatively affect you or your trading will suffer. Um, if you can develop a probabilistic mindset, you can handle these boatload of this boatload of emotional and psychological issues that the market hits us with every day. You know, because at the end of the day, you still want to be able to leave your office and go pet the dog and not kick the dog. What about things outside of trading? Um, do you recommend when people are going through, you know, some type of health issue or uh, some type of um, crisis? in their life that it's not a good time for them to be trading? You can't, you can't do it, Dale, because if you can't, if, well, if then you're not, I never would have traded because I've always been in. <laughs> <laughs> well, you, then you better have, you huh? better have really good risk management tools. Okay. Well, I didn't always. <laughs> and so <laughs> I'm still, I'm both of what you said. Someone who, <laughs> who already blew up accounts and someone who, who may, although I very, uh, I doubt it. Uh, but you know, people have done it more than once. Yeah, absolutely. I mean, I've done it more than once. Okay. It's, I, it, I knew I'd get a confession out of you. And you got to get your, you have to have your head right. So, yeah. or you better have serious discipline in, in dealing with risk management. Because if, as soon as you start going like, oh, well, I'll just wait till it bounces before I get out or I'll, I'm going to double down because I know it's going to work and all that, that type of thinking destroys yeah. you. It yeah. destroys your accounts. I like this, you know, the, uh, what do you advocate putting in a physical paper stop on your trades? Absolutely. Okay. Uh, Cause uh, anyone who's uh, listening right here, the last time I used a mental stop, my first stop was a mental institution. So, it'll, uh, it'll destroy you. Yeah. So, so, so if you get picked off and you're wrong, the mark, uh, you know, right, the market wrong, the trade you recommit because it's at one time you don't have it in. You live okay, to fight man. another day. 
And, and here's an example of how we handle that, that, let me go back, that initial risk we talked about, the one, the risk management yeah. um, for entries. There's, there's something we post every day, which is called the fuse for the ES, which is for you know, short-term market movement. It's a level at which um, it's sort of the supply demand level, the, the support resistance level that the market will rotate around. It gives us well-defined risk when we use that because we know above this level, it's bullish. Below this level, it's bearish. Don't try and fight the market if you're on the wrong side of those. We combine that with high probability patterns, which we reviewed on our last, uh, on our last uh, talk. And, and the key thing here is it works in bear markets. It works in bullish trends. It works in flat conditions. And that's what you want. You want something that's going to help you deal with this uncertainty and this, this sort of unlimited environment where anything can happen. You have defined rules where you know, if X happens, I got to do Y. If A happens, I got to do B and, that, and, and make it mechanical. I'll show you some examples from yesterday. We don't cherry pick. This is, this is just yesterday's market. So the red lines here are the fuse lines. The red lines here are the, are the two different fuse lines. Here is a support resistance line we, that we, we give as well. So we started the morning off doing what we call a hellfire pattern, which is this triangle around the line. Once we broke above it, you could, you could trade into this, this move higher. The next fuse line came in later in the day. Here's where it is. You know that when, and this pattern is called a flashover pattern, which has a flat top and, a, and an ascending uh, higher bottoms coming in. This is a bullish pattern. Once we break out, come back and test the line, you know you can play long. And it's just, a, it's just one of the examples of, of how you have to manage risk. This gives us an edge in managing risk. Okay. Well, Ben, happy new year, brother. Happy new year to you, Dave. You know, I, I, I hope that for you and the people you work with that it's a gusher for you guys okay along with crude breaking out over 69 bucks uh, some great looks and much respect my trading warrior brother thank you dale always appreciate spending time with you okay everyone so that's a wrap turn around tuesday good hunting and we'll catch you tomorrow remember don't just count your pips count your blessings and we'll see everyone tomorrow and I'm just going to end the meeting here. See you, Prabash and Monica. Okay. And adios.